start with the uh, public input statement from the vice chair. The first public input session is a 15-minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. A second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents. The board chair may grant non-residency opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions cannot be made during public input. For example, matters inver involving personnel. Is there any public input? No. Okay. In that case, we will move on to the next item on the agenda, uh, the sports update. So it's been a, an eventful winter for Noble Sports, and uh, Mr. Watson is going to come up to the podium to share some of the great news with us. Right there at that podium. Yeah, I this was here. Good evening, good evening, everyone. It's a very sensitive microphone. You don't have to worry about it. You can stand. I have a loud voice, so you'll be good. It's with tremendous pride that I'm standing in front of the residents of Berwick, North Berwick and Lebanon this evening to, to give you a sports update. Um, I can't give you a rundown due to time of all the amazing things that happened this, this winter, but um, I was asked to bring two of our seven winter indoor sports teams um, to, to this evening to celebrate some of the amazing accomplishments that have happened. Um, I'd like to start with our wrestling team, and our wrestling team is represented by the team captains here this evening. Um, as well as the coaching staff, coaches Gray, Zellers, Badger, Dubois, and Bronder. Uh, this team, um, I don't know how I can get them on camera, uh, but I'd like them uh, to be able to show the folks uh, the two state championship trophies that they won this year. Um, they won the, uh, their first state championship as a team since 2011, and uh, they also won the State of Maine's inaugural duels state championship uh, with a 65-16 win over Mount Ararat. Um, they are here this evening to be recognized by the board and uh, the folks who are here, as well as the folks uh, uh, at the communities of, of Lebanon, Berwick, and North Berwick. Um, so congratulations, gentlemen. You've done our, our community proud. Um, I know that many folks drove around the communities and saw signs of support, um, uh, wishing you good luck. And uh, it, it was a tremendous experience this year, and I'm, I'm glad that, uh, that things turned out the way they did, and I was glad to be a part of that. So congratulations to you. Um, I would love it if you could stand up in front yes. and, yes, uh, and, and display our display. Yes. And just a quick word is um, 
We'd like to thank the community, obviously, for the support, and also the uh, the fire departments of both Berwick and North Berwick, and the police departments for our uh, our nice parade that we had from Sanford. Uh, it was it was really great, and uh, we'd like to thank all of again the community for all the support, and we hope to bring another one back next year. Thank you, Coach. Uh, you had some athletes who earned some uh, b beyond the team accolades. You had some athletes who um, collected some individual accolades. Would you mind sharing those with us? Correct. Yeah, we had uh, four individual state champions this year. Um, Derek Cody at 113 pounds. Derek, where are you? Derek's not here today. Never mind, Derek. Just the captains came today. So uh, Josh Cody uh, was at 132 pounds. Uh, Sam Martell, who is here at 145, one of our senior captains and uh, PJXL at uh, 285. Uh, we did qualify seven for our uh, New England qualifier, which is this weekend, this Saturday, here at Noble. Uh, the top three finishers from there will be going to New England's the following weekend. So and we saw to continue on. Two, arti two, ar three. two articles in the newspaper, one on Derek Cody yep. and one on PJXL. Correct. Who won one match when you don't do the disqualifications his freshman year when he came out for wrestling and is a state champion as a junior. Correct, yeah, his freshman year he came out and uh, won one match um, and uh, had a tough year but kept plugging along and uh, you know his junior year he's now a state champ so he's a, he's a really great story. And that's a, what, 279, 285? 285, 285. Yeah. yeah. Coach, I have a question. Can you explain what the di what's the difference between state champ and dual state champ? So, right, so in, uh, in wrestling you have an individual tournament that is scored. Um, so as you advance, you get different placement points. So if you place first, you get 20 points. You place second, you get 18. Um, where in a duels tournament, you actually, our whole team, all 14 weight classes will wrestle another team. And, and then the entire team will move on. So a lot of states do it. Uh, this is the first year the state of Maine has done a dual state tournament and an individual state tournament. So uh, we're happy to be uh, a part of both. Is the final score of one of those supposed to sound like a lopsided basketball game? Yeah, pretty much. So the max you can score is 84. We scored 65 to 65. 15, I think it was. So yeah, it was a pretty lopsided battle. Unbelievable. Yeah, they made me look good that day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was a video of you jumping about six feet off the yeah, ground. So you I got a little a nice, excited in PJ's match. You got a, you yeah, got a little, little air bit, on that. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Track, yeah, right. I'll tell yeah, we'll get some high jump. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, Track. Thank you all. It's so important to celebrate these these opportunities when they come around. State championships are hard to come by, and this group was um, was phenomenal in their efforts this year. So, um, really appreciate them being here and being recognized. Um, what wasn't said is um, we do have seven athletes that are going to be participating in that New England qualifier that does take place right here at Noble High School. We're very proud to uh, to have this MPA event here. That'll be an all day event on Saturday here on the 29th. Uh, first match is supposed to go off at 9:30. We'd love to have your support here. Uh, we will have seven players that are. Uh, seven athletes that are trying to uh, qualify for New England's. They are Sam Martell, Josh Cody, Derek Cody, PJ Exel. Those were the state champions, as well as Chris Pilcher, Blake Willette, and Jake Mulligan. So good luck to you guys. Man. Next up, I'd like to, to recognize the, the, the indoor track team who is here on mass this evening. Thank you so much for your support. Coaches Lawrence Stoll, Blindo, Jones, uh, McAuliffe, and Matucci. Um, we had the boys and the girls indoor track teams had their best seasons ever for indoor track. Um, and I'd like to mention some of the um, important things that happened with them, and I'll have them come up in just a moment after I read these things off. We had 11 athletes with a podium finish at the state, uh, at the state tournament, which took place um, at USM on Martin Luther King Day, February 17th. Um, those athletes were CJ Nicely with a sixth place finish in the shot put. Bailey Sear with a sixth place finish in the 55 hurdles. Connor DeCourt with a sixth place finish in the 400 meter. Matt Gorman with a fifth place finish in the triple jump. Megan Lawrence with a fifth place finish in the mile. Emma McLaughlin with a fourth place finish in the 55 meter hurdles. Natalie Randall with a third place finish in the triple jump. JT Chason with a third place finish in the 55 meter hurdles. Tessa Sear with a second place finish in the high jump. Owen Podolik with a third place finish in the 200 meter and Owen Podolik was our state champion, the fastest kid in the state in the 55 meter dash uh, with a 6.50. 
Um, in addition to those 11 podium finishes, which is really a, a tremendous accomplishment uh, with our program, we had three, six, nine, we had 10 school records, correct me if I'm wrong, 10 school records broken? Nine school records broken. Um, I'd like to list those off too, and then I would like to invite our track team up for their recognition. Um, so we have school records uh, in the junior and senior 55 meter hurdles by JT Chase on, the 55 meter uh, by Owen Podolik, uh, the senior triple jump Matt Gorman school record, the junior 55 meter Ali Gnerk, M Melissa Pass in the junior 800, the senior 200 Natalie Randall is in a tie for the school record. Senior high jump, Tessa Sear broke the school record, and senior triple jump, Natalie Randall as well. Um, so you hear a lot of the same names, but you hear some different names too. And then in the open, four by 200 meter relay, Ali Gunnerk, Natalie Randall, Emma McLaughlin, and Sophia DiCarlo. Um, those athletes had an amazing season. Um, it's, it's, and I say amazing, they practice in hallways, in cafeterias, in classrooms, in half gymnasiums, and uh, they compete against schools that have indoor tracks uh, or have access to those facilities. Um, and to come away with 11 podium finishes against some of the better teams with better facilities in the state is just a testament to what our coaches do and what our athletes do every day. You guys had an amazing season. I'd like you to come up and be recognized. Well, I, I'm wondering if we can just uh, have the pan camera out. pan that way. So. <laughs> It would be like moving half the school, I think. As, as you continue to pan out, I do need to mention that we have three athletes that, have, uh, that are going to be competing at the New England Championships. That's this Saturday. It's down at the Reggie Lewis Center just outside of Boston, Mass. Uh, those three athletes are JT Chason, Owen Podolik, Podolik, and Tessa Sear. They're going to be competing down there this weekend against the best athletes in New England. So I wish you guys luck. So, uh, Owen, where are you? Owen is currently at baseball. <laughs> I was going to say he has a unique distinction in the state of Maine. Um, he's, he's uh, I think his number one sport, I mean, he may say differently, but I think his number one sport is baseball. And he's the first guy that I've heard of that pitches a fastball and runs to home plate to catch it. So, <laughs> you, see, you see how that goes? Yeah, you, never mind. All right. So... Jeez, tough crowd. Um, so what we have on the back counter, was on the back counter? Okay, there is a uh, sheet cake. Um, uh, Coach Gray, you're in charge of the knife. Uh, somebody else is in charge of the knife. And uh, what we'd like you to do is to make sure you uh, enjoy a piece of the, uh, unless the coach is... I, I don't want to hear about somebody having to suck weight, to, you know, because they ate a piece of cake. So, so if you'd like a piece of cake, we'd appreciate it if you'd help yourselves. And again, thank you very much. Congratulations. Good luck in the spring. I want to thank the members of the school board for this opportunity to show off all the great things that are going on in our sports. This is just a small portion of some of the things that are going on. We had lots of other team successes this winter, and we're hopeful to, to kind of catapult that into the spring sports season. And um, thanks for all of your support in our endeavors. It's much appreciated. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item number five, the minutes of January 16th. Any discussion? Yeah, they're old minutes, but we didn't have a quorum at the last yes. meeting, so that's why they've come back. Oops. Any comment? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Joanne motioned to accept. Sorry. Sorry. And Linda to second. And uh, all in favor? Uh, wait a minute. Can we have a hand again? One, two, three, four. Five six zero oh, abstain. Okay. Student report. All right. So I also had on my list to congratulate them because it's amazing to be surrounded by people like that who are breaking records. <laughs> um, also, the boys basketball won the sportsmanship award for the second year in a row. They're accepting that in Portland on Saturday, I think, at 3 p.m. 
Um, I just think it's really great to be surrounded, especially as we're seniors, with so many people who are doing great things, moving on to different teams, doing different games up in like Husson University, I've heard. So many great things going on for the senior sport athletes. Um, yeah, girls and boys. Did you say girls too? I didn't know girls yeah. did. Yeah. I have only heard the of the boys, but that is great yeah. for the girls too. <laughs> I will probably be seeing yeah. that being accepted as well. Yeah. Um, but also for our school and seniors, we have a 3v3 this weekend, and there's teams I've heard of like adults, kids from the school, and um, we're coming out to support our senior class. We're bringing in donations, food. Um, and then at the same time, Chipotle is also having some of their profits. I don't know the exact amount, but it's also supporting our senior class. So we've got a lot of good things going on right now I want to focus on. Um, some more things, National Honor Society letters are being sent out to those that are eligible. I heard this morning from Ms. Strange that there's about 150 applicants, so it's another huge pool of kids eligible. Um, same with, I don't know if you've seen around the school, usually in March we do this positivity thing, put up sticky notes and leave nice letters. We're doing that again, we're actually going to try to change it a little bit, so we're working that out with the Wellness Club, which was just started this year, doing inspirational quotes um, and maybe things that kids want to do for their future and we're going to plan on hanging that up somewhere. But for the most part, everything's going good, everyone's settling into second semester and excited for the events for each class. Excellent, thank you. All right. Uh, well, now we have the budget presentation workshop. So the first part is the superintendent's presentation on the budget. So I'll pass out some paperwork here. I'm going to pass those that way. I'm going to pass these this way. I'm going to pass some out that way. Okay. So, thank you for the opportunity to present to the board tonight, the superintendent budget. Um, you have the uh, the initial primary, what we would refer to as draft one, in front of you today with your binders. And um, the so the the 2021 budget binder that you have there represents a 1.3 1 million 314 thousand dollar increase overall to taxpayers that's an equivalent of 6.56 overall increase so there are major factors that influence this budget draft for instance new positions if you would turn to the next page you would see all of the positions from uh, noble high school for instance eighth grade math teacher eighth grade science teacher we talked about that last year adding another team to the eighth grade this year. World language position, it was already added this year but wasn't accounted for in the budget, so we're putting it into the next budget. Uh, adding some hours to the uh, clerical staff for the athletics. Um, at In the Excel program, a two-tenths position in uh, at Knowlton, Elks Behavioral Intervention person, and then an educational technician to accompany that. Uh, all of these are represented in the budget categories that you have in the different tabs. Lebanon, four, five, half regular ed, half special ed position. It's just a half time position. And then in grade two, formerly a Title I-A funded position that would come out of 1A and be in the local budget, so that's one position added to the local. Uh, guidance, a guidance position of a half time. At North Berwick, a grade three teacher. A, and in the grades K through 5, behavioral interventionist, half regular ed, half special education. So you'll see that uh, the person is noted here as a half under the North Berwick uh, 
budget because that's the regular ed portion. We have in Hussey School and Educational Technician II, uh, formally funded as well by Title I-A. And we have a teacher half-time, special education half-time, regular education at Hussey, uh, which will be an increase of a half in Audra's budget. At Mary Hurd Academy, uh, previously the administrator, the administrative team were teaching principals and they're moving to administrators, so that is uh, an increase of one, uh, half for each, um, each of the gentlemen. And then MHA is a reduction of one teaching position because they would not be listed as teachers at that point. Uh, educational technician, they will be performing roles as teachers but not listed as teachers. They've received administrative pay. Educational technicians, uh, MHA, a four-tenths increase. On the flip side, you see that there are uh, in administration an IEP coordinator for the Knowlton School Assistant Director. Um, that LE stands for local entitlement. That's the federal grant money that the federal government decides based on your population of students who qualify for special education. Here is the amount your local district is entitled to. So it's, it's kind of a little bit of a confusing title to call that local entitlement from federal grants. Um, that is uh, not uh, in the district budget currently, so we need to add that into the district where it was under local entitlement. Teachers, you can see uh, behavioral interventionist. There's a retirement occurring at NBES, so that is a reduction of one. Knowlton halftime uh, and .5 IEP coordinator. Is that a coordinator or uh, IEP Michelle? Yes. Oh, Susan. The coordinator position has gone away, and uh, it will become a full-time teaching position. So coordinator position is going away. It would become a full-time teaching position. And it's, so, but it's only an additional half. Got it. The person is currently half and half. Half, half and half, yes. And then grade four and five in Lebanon, um, a half and half person will move to a half time at the grade four or five. And then special, uh, school psychologist in the local entitlement in, in uh, this year, six-tenths of that will come out of local entitlement into our budget. It's part of the annual, I'm just going to say it's like a dance that Susan Macri has to do to balance the uh, local entitlement and the local funds. Um, and then also school psychologist not being replaced, so that's a loss of a point eight there. At the transportation department, the garage, one special education driver, two regu regular education drivers, so three total. A flex driver that was added in F20 has to be accounted for, so that's into this budget, and two bus monitors. Um, once again, we've talked ad nauseum about the lack of drivers, the opportunity to have full staffing. Uh, it has been an incredible stretch on that department this, this year. Teaching and Learning, that is Shannon Swigert's department, a K-5 to math coach for the elementary buildings to circulate through the elementary schools. That's one full position to support the Eureka Math. And then a, add a half curriculum coordinator because previously Heidi Early Hersey was split between 35 and 60 and Shannon is fully under 60. Maintenance department, uh, assistant director of facilities because um, the, the moving forward with the school revolving renovation fund work and with the projection of possibilities for major construction work on the horizon, uh, that would be uh, an impossibility for Mr. Moore to take care of all aspects of those jobs and his current job. Central office, full-time year-round social media doc star. That's turning everything over to electronic resources. That's a full-time position. In the ELL, or ESOL, English Language Learner Programs, we're looking to add a one additional teacher. We have one district-wide, and uh, there's new regulations just out about the roles of teachers that you have to have. If you score a one or two on the WIDA, you have to have two periods of direct instruction per day, and it cannot be by an educational technician. 
um, even if they're certified in ES ELL. It's, it's got to be by a, by a teacher. And there are a couple of other regulations that go with that. School health coordinator, it was formally funded by Title V. That is, uh, Title V is the REAP funds, which is rural education from the federal government. Federal gov uh, uh, education director uh, DeVos has decided that uh, Title Fives are wiped out. So we're losing those funds, uh, and we're challenging that at the state level. Uh, but for this time being, we'd have to pick up the halftime coordination of the position. State subsidy. State subsidy is a really interesting thing. It's like trying to follow the bouncing ball, only it's a football and you don't know where it's going to go. So state, state subsidy, if you look at our subsidy, it represents a decrease of $673,000. Um, one thing I would like to point out to people, though, is while it, the total receivership of state subsidy is down, there's something that is a little bit unusual for us this year. The 20-year bond on this high school is paid off. So the way it works is uh, it's state funding. So 20 years ago, the state first said, here's your first year payment on that, $1.67 it's taken in as revenue, run through our system, and given back to the state. Instead of, why don't you just keep it and we'll call it good. It comes through, it filters through the school system. This is the last year of the high school payments uh, for the state. So after this, there will be a, de so we have, uh, for next year's budget, we have a decrease of our revenue from the state for 1.67 million but we also, on the expenses side, won't be sending that out. So that'll be a wash. Uh, a good thing for us is that the mill rate for 2020, how many dollars per thousand dollars of property valuation is necessary to fund education. Uh, this current year is at $8.28. Next year moves to eight eighteen. So that means the taxpayers are paying slightly less on the mill rate, which means that the, that the uh, state government is picking up the difference on that. Negotiated contracts are obviously major factors. Teachers, that's in negotiation. We also have administrative association, teach, uh, support staff, AFL-CIO, as well as numerous contracted services. And the contracted services are listed in just about each of your cost centers. You'll see it on their detailed pages. Changeover is always an important category in the budget. Uh, if you have any retirements, for instance, um, and, and new hires. Insurance projected increase. April 1st, we get the news. In the books that you have right now, we have that represented at a 5%. Capital improvement plan routine maintenance for this year is a total of $200,000, substantially short of what we would have wished to have seen it, but we know last year was yet another challenge. Um, this year we have that set at approximately $522,000, so um, that gets, Kevin, what, four projects done? Yeah, four, or four or five major projects done for us this year. Uh, doesn't leave us a lot to work with after that. Um, I mentioned the REAP funds, uh, school revolving renovation funds, potential cost. We received $1.8 million. The state would pay, uh, that's for uh, asbestos abatement at Noble Middle School. The uh, completion of that, that is for sprinkling. The uh, remaining portion of Hanson School that's not sprinkled, uh, sprinkling North Berwick Elementary and Hussey Elementary, which would all be part of the larger scale projects that we're looking at and would help to reduce some of those costs. That's 1.8 mil, and the state would pick up 59.14% uh, of that, so a little over a million. So our share would be $730,000 over a 10-year bond, so approximately $73,000 per year. That will need to go out in a referendum in June. Draft two. So the information that you're going to be seeing on this next page 
is above and beyond the booklets that you have in front of you. Your binders are draft one. If you would turn to uh, the page that says draft two reductions. So the administrative team has been meeting far too often lately. <laughs> you just kind of start to look at numbers and they sort of blend together. And what we have offered at this point is approximately, I think it was 196000 more dollars from that. Let me just back up and check my number. Um, $197,000, and that would bring the uh, overall 6.56 that you have in your first draft down to a 5.58 and would represent an increase of, that 5.58% represents an increase of $1,117,000 to taxpayers, which that particular number is less than the fixed costs of the, um, of the contracts that we have in place. So that means anything else is a loss. Anything else funding-wise is a loss for us. So on this, we have, uh, as you can see, uh, technology under the technology budget, uh, subcalling system from frontline to time clock plus. If we didn't make that move, it would save 10,000. If we reduce field trip transportation by 10,000, transportation one take instead of a five and one on the busing, move to a four and one, four large, one small. We already know that we have one state subsidy we've been approved for. So, uh, but don't forget the state subsidy means that even though the state says you can uh, take your 2006, that's what this bus is, full size bus out of circulation, um, you cannot, you will not get the funding for that until a year out. So the funding from the state for the bus, the replacement cost will be in the 21-22 budget. So we still have to account for the costs that we need to spend in this budget. And then the second thing that we have done is uh, Brenda worked on a Volkswagen diesel, uh, the, the federal diesel money that Volkswagen had to pay in penalties. And she worked on a grant to uh, receive money for that. I think it's a 60-40 that we put into the competitive grant. So we're paying around 35,000 out of the cost for the whole, whole bus. Um, the per so we'll reduce the uh, expend the bus line from five and one to four and one, and I think that's a really good move because if we do six buses this year, what's going to happen in ten years, eleven years? They're going to need to do six buses in a year. Uh, transportation purchased bus re bus repairs. It's uh, we're we're looking at the money that we have in there, Denise. I think it's for some reason. I think it's around seventy-five thousand, and we've been tracking what the totals are year to year, how much we've been spending. So we felt that we would be okay if we reduce that by twenty thousand, particularly because the board has been great about uh, improving our replacement cycle. How am I doing, Denise? Excellent. Okay. Um, Mary Heard Academy supplies professional development down 8000 remove $8,000 for that. It's going to local entitlement. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Good. Uh, so that, yes, so we're shifting those funds over to local entitlement. And then also under Mary Heard Academy, there's a fund in there for contracted services, but we have not in the last two years required the use of that contracted service. So we're taking that out of the budget in the hopes we will not need the contracted services in a third year. Um, all cost centers, the medical premiums, taking a risk here. This is taking a deep dive into the shallow end. So we're at 5% right now in your first draft binders, and we're talking about moving to 3%, which would put us at a decrease of $100,000 in the medical premiums. That's, that's, t that's tight. That's where... Denise does a great job watching a couple of uh, resources, whether it's our high yield claims or our loss ratios and so forth. So when she tracks those, she's been able to give us pretty, pretty darn good 
uh, guesses year to year, except for that first year when we got that 13 percent when they went to uh, one-off ratings instead of group ratings. Um, so we feel that uh, that's a little on the tenuous side. Um, Noble Middle School has uh, two retirements and uh, replacements with, uh, so there'll be unfilled positions. So we're going to estimate that it could be, you don't, you don't really know there either because of experience of people and uh, benefits that somebody may or may not take. Uh, and, we, and we don't try to handcuff people by saying you can only do this or that person. So uh, we're going to anticipate approximately a $23,000 savings in that line. The administrative team has a list of suggestions for the board's potential decision sheet considerations. If you could turn to that page. So next week, the administrative team will be back to speak to you specifically about each item on this page. Because the point is, while it takes us from a 5.58 down to a potential 4.35, the impact of these changes is going to be, I'm going to say the word devastating. It's going to be devastating to our, to our progress, to where we're trying to go. And so we're not advocating that the board take everything from that list and say, hey, great, thanks very much. You've, you've cut to the chase for us. But we're saying that if we're in a situation where if you have a $40 million budget, and let's say just let's pick an easy number, 3%. Let's say you have fixed costs uh, in, in a lot of contracts at 3%. You're already talking $1.2 before you even get out of the gate and consider anything else in a budget. So we're talking about how to add positions, make some shifts in the work we're doing, do the juggling act and local entitlement. Uh, continue to move forward with the progress we're making in social emotional learning and tra uh, trauma informed schools, for instance, and the support here for multiple pathways and other programs. And we're trying to figure out how do we do that when in, this, when in essence the fixed costs are, are meaning that we are doing more work with less dollars. So as you can see, it talks about uh, uh, the, so, again, people are going to talk to these next week. So you, when you're going around today and talking with people, I don't think you necessarily need to focus on the things that are suggested on this particular sheet. But, of course, feel free, any topic. So eliminate uh, an SUV. We were talking about purchasing SUVs, have a little bit more flexibility in use for us than the vans do. Uh, and we are building programs. You remember multiple pathways started out at about 35 students and they're going to be up about 100 students in total, uh, the total population next year. And part of that agreement is the opportunity for them to have free flow in their activity throughout the uh, school year. Um, in Lebanon, uh, eliminating half-time guidance position, Knowlton School, one Fountas and Pinnell reading kit, you see that number correctly, $6,500. Maintenance, reduce one by one insurance deductible. So the money that we set aside for uh, when we need to use insurance deductibles, we would reduce that by $5,000. Kevin, what is that now? Is that at $10,000? 10000 thank you. Uh, Huzzy School, reduce, inst each of the elementary schools said we'll reduce $2,000. We're down to markers, right? We're down to markers. We're down to uh, uh, regular school supplies. Um, the the, uh, uh, all the middle school, the high school all said the same thing. High school said $2,500. Uh, uh, Joe said he would throw in the erasers with it. Um, athletics, it's uh, reducing the uh, middle school tournament fees. Maintenance department, remove this. This is a very difficult one. Uh, it was the last thing that I put on the list, 
removing MHA garage intended for ec uh, the extended learning opportunities. The, the work that you're doing now with those students is unbelievable. The opportunity for them to use simple home kinds of power tools to continue to do more extended learning opportunities uh, with every kind of topic that's related to woodworking, for instance, um, that could be done. We can't spend the money to uh, put a filtration system into the school, but we can add a garage and open some doors. Uh, so I really struggle to see that one on this list. Transportation, reduced travel of professional development, reduced textbook budget at NMS, uh, reduced con contracted services for grounds work at Knowlton. Uh, if you've had an opportunity to visit Huzzy School, there was this professional organization called the Hamill Family, I think. Was it the Hamill Family? It was the Hamill Family. I was stunned when I came by the front of that school at the start of the school year in, in how amazing that that looked. And it was an opportunity for Knowlton to do the same thing, to revitalize, refresh the front of their school. But uh, we've, we've offered that. Eliminate summer, summer data retreat honoraria for people who are in, under teacher contracts and, not, and reduce the pool of people who are coming to that. Move the middle school across uniforms to the 22 rotation. Reduce requested equipment at the high school. Elim cut the ELL position from a full time to a half time. Instead, I, I think it's a slippery slope. I'm not sure we're going to meet the, the uh, new state statute if we do that. And then at central office, uh, instead of bringing in a person to do the full time work as uh, PR and the in the doc star work in getting rid of our backlog of uh, the earliest paperwork I can find is 1917. So getting rid of all the backlog that's there, um, we would uh, look to change that to stipended position for some people who already are at central office and they would take that on as extra duties. So the potential savings, if all of these things were put on there at, at $245,425, would bring us down to 4.35, as I mentioned, or an $872,000 overall increase to taxpayers. The timeline that's coming up, as a reminder to the board, March 5th, budget discussions, board, the administrative team will be back to talk specifically about the items that we've added to that last sheet. March 19th, budget discussions, April 2nd, third round of budget discussions and April 9th board needs to adopt a uh, formal budget that moves from the superintendent to a board budget by that date. I know that was fast, but you have the resources. Those go into tab 29 in your notebook. Um, what we would like to do now is Terry, I almost moved away. See, I stayed right here. Stayed right here. Uh, we would like to take a break from the formal board meeting and move to a workshop session that we've conducted for the past couple of years anyways, I, I believe. <laughs> I'm looking at Abby. She's going, Abby and Adina and, and Spencer and Andrew are going, yeah, whatever you say. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you the first four people I saw? <laughs> uh, we'd like to take a break, go into a workshop mode. What we have... What we did for a shift is somebody might have a question, like somebody might say to Adina, uh, you got a point two addition in an Excel. Is that really going to cover your need? Or why do you need that? Maybe one person has that question. So instead of taking uh, each person here listening to the same questions um, or, or listening to the same answer, everybody at the same time, what we do instead is the administrative team will spread out around here. Please feel free to, if you don't know some people, also shake a hand and say hello. Or if you're worried about the flu, tap an elbow, let's go. <laughs> and uh, move to a location where you can ask them some specific questions about their budgets. They are prepared for those questions tonight. Um, if there's anything that, you, that uh, comes across that they look at and say, boy, that's a curveball, we've got next week. We can bring you back whatever you need. Also, I would r remind the board that we have uh, electronic opportunities. If you have questions, 
feel free to email the administrator directly with the question. We've used a Google Doc in the past and tried to follow the flow of that. It gets a little, gets a little cumbersome. Any questions? All right, so Terry, we're going to take, a, and Maureen, we're going to take a break for, um, what is it, 25, 30 minutes, maybe, depending on what you need. And if folks could find a
Yeah, Thank so you all. have a good night. Thank you. And they'll be back next week, too. Uh, if you look at the beautiful new school website that we have, you click on the uh, school that the person's from, the emails are there. Yes. So under Volkswagen, as I've already talked about, we have, um, we were approved for a bus. We cannot sell the old bus. It's got to be, the engine's got to be bored through so that we won't gain the $2,000 there. But we have uh, 35,600 wheel sharing cost while the state picks up 53,400. Um, so that's my update on Volkswagen. <coughs> Uh, number nine, NBES PTO backpack donation. So Tracy Hallisey sent me a note saying that um, this this was one I would have brought to a previous meeting, uh, but I think we had something called weather. Mm -hmm. For the month of December, NBES's character trait was empathy. On December 13th, the NBES PTO was assisted this work by sponsoring their holiday family event, A Night with Santa. Instead of charging admission, families donated money and collected food to support the MSAD 60 backpack program. That evening, the PTO was able to collect $329 in donations and would like to submit a check to this important community program. It's under $500, so you don't need to approve it, but I thought I would bring that forward so you knew that that had happened. Express our thanks to them. Uh, we shall. Okay. Uh, the next item is an update on the superintendent search. Pretty much what I emailed everyone. Um, the three of us on the committee are going to spend all of tomorrow doing interviews with the six uh, quarter finalists. Um, and at the end of the day, we should hopefully, if all things work out, have the three semifinalists to bring before the board. Um, and we have a, a group of community. Yeah, we have about how many? 20? 20 people from the community from each of the towns, from all the different levels, from administration all the way down sideways. Uh, try to be as representative of po as possible of the town and the school communities for an advisory board uh, on this process. Um, and it will include uh, our students as well. Um, so once those three have been chosen, uh, we will get that information to you and then we'll be setting up community question answer set uh, question answer answer sessions. That's hard to say. She sells seashells. Um, potentially some tours that will take place sometime the week of March 9th through 13th. And if you can please we'll publicize the dates if you can attend, that would be great because you'll get a sense of them in their potential environment. Um, and then um, there will be a, um, a, a probably on, on we need to, we have a set of questions that we're going to be asking tomorrow, but there will be a slightly different set that the board needs to ask. So we'll need to meet to run over those and, and make sure that we have we'll have the information we want from the candidates so that we can make the best choice. Um, so that's March 19th before or after the board meeting. That is a board meeting day. Uh, and then the final interviews with the full board uh, will take place between April 6th and 10th. Again, we will let you know as soon as we have verified dates with the candidates. I just want to add that we've had a really impressive pool of candidates. I think we said that before, so, which is, I think says a lot about the district. Yeah. One from as far away as Alaska. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the uh, April 16th board meeting is where we will actually make the final vote on the chosen candidate. So that is that. Any questions about that? Okay. All right. Um, then on to building committee update. Okay. Um, I'm going to be going into. Um, CHA tomorrow with Kevin Moore uh, to do some the next round of discussions with Alan Cunningham and Ashley Richards there about the spacing. We've seen some maps um, that indicate the the spaces they're getting down to uh, ensuring square footage. Looking at um, the population studies uh, that. 
The population study that we're having the struggle with is in Berwick because it says that the NESDEC study says that Audra Bovace K-3 school will go up seven students between now and 28-29. Sorry, which study was that? <laughs> uh, it's called NESDEC, N-E-S-D-E-C. It's a New England School Development and Economics Council or something like that. And they're an organization that we subscribe to, we pay for service. Um, I think that their uh, Lebanon numbers are reasonable uh, based on what we see in conversations that I've had. I think the North Berwick numbers are reasonable. Um, but to think that that school will go to about 407, 408 kids is just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, Audra picks up more kids than that each year. She doesn't. She's already picked up four this year. So what are we what are we thinking? We're really going to see there. So that's a, a little bit of a, a difficult piece, but we're working through it. Um, Man, I think I've asked this before, but do they this group that comes up with a study do they factor the potential growth that is going to happen? So they look at live births, they collect um, information from the municipalities on permits that are already enacted, they, com they collect information on what are the, what's the economy in the area, what's the kind of households that are being built, what's the property that's, so they, they try to take into account a lot of the, 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 the relevant factors that you and I would hope they would. Um, but. Uh, for instance, across the street from Kitty Corner from the school is a 77-unit <coughs> mobile home park that's going to be built, and it's a, the regulation is that it's a 55 and up. I think I've talked about this possibly with you, that what that means is that one permanent resident in each home needs to be 55 or over. There's, it's not a child-free place and we see generational family situations going on in each of our schools so to imagine that we're going to pick up two students from that is not realistic to me I don't know what's going to happen with the uh, the revision revisioning work for prime tannery but uh, the workforce housing. There's a place in Gorm that um, is that has been built to be like that, but those units are significant. The units that are above the uh, restaurant, the hops uh, factory, and the and the insurance company are extensive. They're they're extremely high rental. I mean, owned, owned properties. I just don't think that's. This, I don't think we can compare what might come in prime tannery versus what's coming in the middle, what's already been built in the middle of Gorm Village. There's a different kind of community from one to the other. It's just, it's just the way it is. So we're, we're uh, our current plan is to have a one floor wing that uh, has connecting enclosed breezeways and has a slab on the top of it because what we don't want to do is um, we want it built to sustain a second floor in the event of. Uh, the other thing that we've done is we're planning to do some relocation of some of our services that, that are district-wide services that happen at Huzzy that we would like to see at our North Berwick school. And we think that that will, uh, we know that will free up some interior classrooms. So we'll, I don't want to be in the situation, I don't want to put the towns in a situation where over the life of a 20 year bond that halfway into it, 
we're saying now's the time to put that second floor on or we, we're going to make some space and the other thing we're going to do is we're going to balance out the population of our three school our, our three town schools by doing that because of the population that North Borough will pick up population that Hussey would uh, be reduced by so that's kind of what's in the works um, uh, I am um, having conversations with uh, I've had some conversations with some folks related to the bond bank and Panette or is she oh Tori Reed excuse me thank you um, and also conversations with some folks connected to uh, the the DOE and making sure that we're on track with our plans for the building committee um, one of the questions that has come up and will come up probably again and again is why September 15 for a referendum and the answer to the question is timing everything comes down to timing if we were to go out on the June referendum um, we're not going to make that timeline we're not going to be ready by then and because we're in the school the business of schools we have those windows referred to as summer so if we wait until the November election <clears throat> we will not have our plans in place we won't have the contractors in place the whole timeline that you have to follow by the Bureau of Real Estate Management it's it's too late for us they'll already be booked in other projects it's hard enough to find those organizations let let alone be late into the process so those companies <clears throat> so September <clears throat> I've tracked that out with Alan kind of home from a uh, from CHS uh, CHA <clears throat> and that will allow us uh, the time we need to follow uh, a reasonable process to get people on board and start work is should the referendum pass <clears throat> if the referendum passes we're in great shape to go if the referendum for some reason did not pass um, there is still money invested in this project like 329,000 I think it is uh, through the A&E pieces uh, architect engineer pieces that we need to do and we'll be on the hook for that if it's if the project passes it's rolled into that and all of those costs live outside of your budget in the bond stream so you you have your receipts and you submit them to the bond bank and they reimburse you for those um, there's one or two things at the Lebanon school that I need to get a time to sit down and chat with the Lebanon selectmen to talk about some things that are there that are town resources that we got to think about uh, how how does that work because it, it can't be part of the bond package where there's, there's three towns pay to help to relocate a certain item I'm not talking the Martha Sawyer library so I don't want people to worry about that um, Travis or who else? Um, yeah. Lynn no, no Nancy. Yeah. see Nancy. do this all the time okay do you have anything to add to that no, not at this time. Did, did we schedule a, another meeting after I left the last one? Yes, we did. I'll uh, ask Jen to get the meeting date out. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Uh, number 12, school revolving renovation fund results. So I think I covered some of that. Yeah. 1.8 mil, four projects. We cover 730,000 over a 10 year bond since it's got to go for a bond it's got to go out to a referendum that will occur in the June referendum as a separate item <coughs> from the school budget um, those have really high success rates the state's going to contribute a million dollars to do projects that uh, probably 650 of that would could come off the cost of the overall construction for the, the big projects uh, there's no wonder that there, there are things we need to do anyways sprinkle the buildings and take care of the asbestos abatement at the middle school the sections that are left will we have a chance to like, <coughs> write it in a way that kind of sells it mm -hmm. okay. um, so what I'll what I have already done is met with um, 
Drummond Woods, some financial guru, Bill Stockmeyer. And he and I have uh, worked with Alan to look at that time frame and sequence, and he's going to provide me sample language that has been used to uh, overwhelming success. success and <laughs> yes, yep, and that meets any obstacles. So, this, these projects that we were got through the revolving renovation fund are projects that would have to be done anyways if we were able to get approval for the expansion or the remodeling of the three elementary schools so set aside the asbestos abatement at the middle school uh -huh. if those buildings are upgraded the requirement today is that they're sprinkled so we will need to do that no matter what so and we can have state assistance on that and have a 10-year bond and be in better shape and then the other no interest is it oh zero percent interest yeah um and then the other aspect is phase three at the middle school it doesn't cover all of phase three at the middle school but it's a portion <coughs> of the phase three plan that we've pushed off the last two years yeah so the abatement would require a phase three to take two summers because you got to get that abatement done, work done, and whatever they happen to find at the same time. And there's there's one summer, and then the next summer is your uh, revitalization of the cafeteria, art, uh, excuse me, music room, chorus room, uh, locker rooms, and administrative wing and library, right? And and we've had um, uh, civil consultants do the costing the. The conceptual work on that and the costing and it's something that can be done in a couple of years possibly through um, CIP but that remains to be seen on it depends on how each budget year flows mm -hmm. you have a like the school people would say hey the high school is paid off that's great yep and the high school is also 20 years old and the boilers <coughs> A 1968 boiler at the middle school was built differently than a 2000 boiler at the high school. Guess which one was had has a longer life, the one at his school, than the ones that we have, right? Because the quality is is a different level. Um, our two pumps that we had for our um, water flow and septic system here, we've had to replace both of those already. We've only ever replaced once, one time at the middle school. I guess what I'm trying to get at though is that this this grant that we received is going to help us fulfill part <coughs> of the phase three project that we've put off the last couple of years because of budget restraints. Yeah. So we are trying to be proactive and getting these things done in other means yep. as well as on the certain tax, tax dollars. Certainly. So the, the plan is turn over every stone that we can find to reduce the costs to the three towns for the work that needs to be done anyways. Within a short window of time frame, here's a simple example. Lebanon Elementary School is going to need to be replaced. My uh, longer range vision for this would be that uh, a referendum passes, the school projects happen, this, the district now reaches a circuit breaker amount with uh, the um, debt service, qualifies for state funds within a couple of years after the referendum has passed. You put a, you put a, a complete new classroom section and some renovations to uh, the middle school on the state list and I think you're in great shape at that point to get that done and also to do some upgrades to Mary Heard Academy and then the district's in really good shape this will be the next piece because it's big ticket stuff you, you the parking lots you got to replace the paving it's a million bucks it's just there's no way around it and you can't lease purchase paving <laughs> you yeah. you paving and roofing you you got to pay for it. That's all there is to it. No loans on those. Any further questions? All right, number 13, the calendar approval for next year. I'll keep one in. Any of those or two? Okay. 
So the only change since the last, uh, we've gone through all of this. We've submitted with SRTC. The uh, we're we're six days out of sync right now instead of five. And the one day out of sync that pushes us over is election day in November on the third. Uh, and we've asked the state for an exemption for that, given the fact that two of our schools are voting polls. Um, and we believe that we'll do okay in getting that exemption. Um, and that all eight districts will be in sync. The change on here is just a, just a minor adjustment. March 10 and 17 are the conferences for the middle school. So this current year, we haven't gotten those broken out on the right dates, but we're on track. I think everything else is exactly as you've seen it. Steve, where, for this year, where are we on snow days right now? Seven. <laughs> Jeez. Today was Well, that is just, if you're, if you're in southern Maine, you luck out today. That's, that's all there is to it. Northern Maine, not so much. Although it helps the industries. So what I would be looking for tonight is a motion and a vote by the board on this particular draft. Um, the association has had an opportunity to look at this and, and uh, meet and consult. Um, just as before we go to that, just a side question that I mm -hmm. keep frequently receiving on an almost daily basis when I run into somebody is these professional development days on Thursdays are a real pain in the rear end yeah. to a lot of these parents. Mm -hmm. Is that, I know, uh, yeah, <laughs> I know that, what's the effect of that if we were to get rid of them in our school calendar? There's so, a couple um, ideas that I have, but I want to see if, if they're true. Every district in the state is currently required by state statute to have uh, certain work that occurs. For instance, right now there's still student learning, SLO, student learning objectives or similar language in there. There are professional learning communities or other language where teachers are being held accountable to the final result of, a, of an MEA test score. They're being held accountable to local assessment scores as well. Held accountable can be a positive term when things are going great um, and not so much when things aren't going so well. But uh, there's, there's a flux in the language in this the argument in the state right now about that and what's going to happen in the future. I don't think we'll see much of a change, but the thing is is that the curriculum that we are working on now, the, the Common Core is, is fairly well in place, but it's our opportunity for teachers to work together. It's the opportunity for them to meet regularly. There really aren't many professions that you could say don't have built-in clinical time to sit and look at student data and make current weekly decisions on what's going on with instruction. And that we want um, these classrooms that are all fourth grade teachers, we'd like them all to sit together with a special education teacher on that team and a global person on that team to be able to uh, develop plans that, that are consistent with each other so that our kids are receiving the same kind of education no matter what school they go to. If we went back to, let's say, 11 times a year, which we had in 2000, 12. I think the I think the high school may have had Deb, you can help me with this or Mike. I think the high school may have had regular frequent late starts, but at the elementary level there was quite a disparity. It was like eleven times a year because who's gonna watch the kids? And and the disparity was creating quite a chasm in the level of work that we were able to accomplish from elementary to secondary. We, we use the time, for instance, to teach people the exact program of literacy that we want them to teach. Um, what does guided, guided reading look like in the classroom? How do you use the Fountas and Pinnell resources? 
when do we work on the proficiency standards or you take take it take pick a topic that's that's when we work on it and the teachers also work on things that they are targeting that they have brought to the table about their current students at that time for instance building assets reducing risks happens then and what if we went to the one day a month aspect that would offset our match with SRTC right um, it really is not a it, it it would be out of sync with SRTC, but what we have is an agreement that um, even if we're out of sync, we transport students to their SRTC programs when they're supposed to be there. That certainly is not something that I could guarantee we could follow through on because we currently do not have enough bus drivers as it is. So. If it is a late start day, how am I getting some other kids some other place while the other buses are out? I'm not well, sure. I'm saying what if we, instead of the late start, we did like when I was in school, it was, there was no such thing as late start or early release. It was, you know, the third Friday of every month was a teacher's workshop day. Ah. And there was no school that day for the kids. So on and so forth. Okay, so gotcha. So, so um, are the people that you're hearing from more on the younger, with the younger kids? They're fast all over between. But parents, like high school um, younger parents have kids, a with the older late kids, and teachers. Okay. I'm hearing from so all do they, do groups. you think that from those people that a whole day off is some is going to be easier? Uh, no, I'm just trying okay. to. I'm just, just trying as to, an example. I'm just trying to put out the questions that I receive so that they can have a outlet to hear reasons why we do what sure. we do. Yeah. So if we went to a, a day a month, let's say, <clears throat> it would substantially impact the overall school budget because the state requires students to go 175 days. And that would mean that we would have, let's say 10 teacher workshop days. We currently have in the budget, the five that are, we have five plus one that's a flex day. We would have to add four days pay for, eat. that would be uh, approximately a half a million to the budget. There's a good answer right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. so why, so why I'm asking those questions to get them to get them out in the public Would because you yeah. <laughs> and you'd have to get the teachers association to agree to add those additional. Things. I think they'd be pretty good at, at right, agreeing yeah. to. Oh, it. I don't think they'd have a problem with that. that. I'm pretty good with it. I don't know, Deb. I don't know. Anything. Um, Would they still meet their requirement though if you had that? Uh, which requirement? I mean, it sounds nice. I'm just we, saying. We would still send the kids to, we would still say these are SRTC days, so we'd meet that requirement. But we'd be, it's a, it's a little over 100, I think it's 109,000 the last time I looked at it to see what a cost would be to have a, a teacher workshop day. Don't quote me on it. It's just a number that I, that I recall for some reason. But um, it, it would be substantial cost, over 100,000 per day. And it would mean that. This, because it would be periodic throughout the year, it would mean that the school year would go longer for students. Right. Thank you. And by the way, school year, please notice with the six snow days in for next <laughs> year instead of five. The heck with this. Right. Uh, and we don't have to move graduation. That's good. Right? Because last year we started with a later plan. They go a week later uh, for graduation. But we get out of having to say to a student, "There's a chance you got to come in on a Saturday, and we got to count on 85 percent or better." You need a vote on this. I do. All right. Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the school calendar. Second. Uh, let second. me. Let me. I'm sorry. Give me just one second. You made the motion, and Linda. Linda. Sorry. Oh, Linda? Linda. Linda. Okay. <laughs> Lin Linda. Excuse me. Travis and Linda. I late. Okay. Got <laughs> yes. it. All right, uh, all in all, favor? Yeah, okay, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh. Thank you. Okay. We'll share it with the state and with SRTC to let them know where it is. Six more things to go. Okay, uh, MSAD 60 guidelines to ED 1684 food shaming bill. Okay, so I'm going to provide you this, let you read. Could you give those two ladies a second of copy, please? Okay. Four, five. 
So you, you recall the food shaming bill? Well, there's some things about it that are accurate and some things about it that are myths. For instance, if a student who owes money to the cafeteria goes up and takes a la carte items, you can quietly take them aside and let them know that the meal that they can have is the subsidizable meal. Um, you don't have to provide the a la carte because those have we don't get a cent back on those. That's pure loss right there. So if you just take a minute and read through this um, charge policy. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm saying charge policy. I should say charge guideline because it's technically not a board policy. And if this is something that uh, uh, Abby Pelletier is doing a great job. She's brought in a couple of grants for us recently, and she's also on track with uh, figuring out some equipment placements um, and putting into place a contract for uh, a continual service of our equipment that was not previously in place. And she has, she and I, have, she wrote this, we reviewed it, made a couple minor changes, rechecked the law, it, uh, it meets all the intent of the law. So what we would do with this is to put it into all of the student handbooks. You know, you're still going to hear from people who claim that their child was told they could have one thing and not another. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and just, just we, we hear that, uh, that a meal got taken away from a student and we're checking with the school and the school's going, we don't take meals from kids. So we hear it all the time. I don't know why. It's just something people have to say. Some people. Is there a time well, I think, there? I think mm -hmm. one of the yes. clarification aspects is the a la carte Thank you. thing mm -hmm. that people yeah. might not be aware of. Like, I wasn't aware of that aspect of it's not food shaming to tell a kid that you can't have an a la carte item, but you can have this item. It and, sounds a little weird. And right? a lot of the kids. No, elementary schools, you don't have any issues with that. But up here at the high school, yeah. where I've heard a lot of the food shaming complaints, I wouldn't be surprised if you did a little more investigation. It's a la carte items that are being told they can't have. Yeah, yeah. Um, the hamburger was ripped out of their hands mm. and thrown in the trash. Mm. Yeah. And a ritual dance. Yeah. And do we um, do we have a sense of? Uh, well, no, no, no. do we have? No, that's fine. So I'm. I don't necessarily need a vote on this. I'm just letting you know that this is the change that we've made that meets the law and keeps our district operating legally while we try to feed kids. Any yes? Just and maybe just spitball answers. At the end of the year, how much outstanding debt do we have? Sorry, that was my question. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> and, do we, and where is that going? And do we have a line item for that? Right, because it was. A lot last year. It was. It was. Um, so um, I believe the amount of money we transferred last year was seventy six twenty seven. Seventy six hundred dollars twenty seven. I, I won right. both showcases. I was going to say seventy five hundred. You would have been right. Right. There. Yeah. Um, I think we we do still. Um, Abby's been looking at that. We've been trying to monitor it. This is really the first year that we've had this policy in place so where I don't know that we're exactly sure I'm trying to think what she might have mentioned is the year-to-date balance and that's not coming to me right now so I would feel better checking in with her and, uh, and it's changed uh, too because we just got the, the uh, 2000 or 2500 check from uh, green truck farm uh, towards our food service bills so I'm not sure what she's at right now, but we can find out and share it with you. So do we have a mechanism in place for the the people that are not paying to en encourage people to apply for? We do that. We so it's really not the issue. It's not that it can't. It's not that they can't afford it. We've even had a state grant before um, to that allowed us to, that paid for us to have a secretary stay overtime to make calls to homes and say, this is the form we need from you, we'll drop it off at your house, so forth, would you like some help filling it out? 
it didn't change our statistics. Um, we, what was the last part of your question? Well, Abby, Abby said, I guess, um, the, sh the number of applications is oh, higher yes. than ever. Yes. For free and reduced lunch. Oh, and last year it had dropped. Yeah, yes. but qualifications is really interesting because the minimum wage has gone up enough where the uh, poverty level has uh, not risen to account for any of that. So we have people who are qualifying by you know, 50, 80, 90 dollars that are saying we don't qualify anymore. But the applications are coming in. Um, we do use um, the 25,000 dollar contingency we have for food service in our budget. It's category 11 and other. That is what we use when we have when the district has to reimburse the food service program. So it is built into the budget. It's also an emergency fund in case there's some equipment holes and they don't have a, a budget to, to replace it, some big. Um, so we've used that as dual purpose over the last couple of years. And you probably recall that the food service is its own standalone category starting last year uh, this year. So it's voted on separately and it always has to be zeroed out at the end of the year. Can't, can't run a debt. Okay. All right. Uh, number 15, guidance for school board chairs and superintendents during public comment at school board meetings. Uh, let me see. Are there enough of those? Can I just give you that? Yes. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. Main School Management has just released this guidance uh, to public school boards because it's a hotbed topic around the state. There is a policy that we have, which our trifold pamphlet that Travis has memorized, and I think Denise is well on her way if she has not already, is, um, what is that, B-E-D-H or something like that. Um, that quotes a lot of the same pieces that are in here, but there's a few different things, so it wouldn't directly replace it. The, pol the policy is actually fine as, as is, but this is just good reminder for the board on things. For instance, if the chair can declare a recess and call, uh, if need be, the chair can declare a recess and call a halt to the meeting. Then you can just step outside. You step outside and take a breather and say, "Are we on track with this?" But you you can actually do a little a little strategy. You can take it take a breather and everything's okay. Good to have. And then that piece, you know, we every yeah. once in a while we have the thing come up where somebody starts to talk about, you don't know what a citizen's going to talk about when they start to mention, well, my son Tommy is, you know, is not receiving this. And so you can't speak about that. That's a confidential matter. Or this particular administrator said this to me. And so you, you can't throw the per that's not what the person, the purpose of public input is it's not to um, it's not a just a complaint pulpit uh, against somebody's decision that somebody didn't like okay and I think I was reading through the pamphlet earlier and, and uh, the language of, of the chair recognizing the speaker and I think that might be a, a way to approach it because what they're supposed to do is state their subject matter and that is the moment where I can tell them I'm sorry mm -hmm. I can't this is not something that we can address at this venue right or whatever right. that there are other vehicles mm -hmm. and, and people get mad and they say things well you know I know another vehicle and they want to go to the press with it okay you're gonna do what you're gonna do yeah. we can't fix that for you okay um, okay um, we are on to first readings yep so there's a, we've got like Joanne I think it was like three or four Joanne and the street, we've got like, um, what, three or four second readings in the queue. And then this last piece right here would be, um, it is a policy that we didn't know about it. I didn't know about it. Jen didn't know about it. 
Some other people didn't. <laughs> and then I mentioned it to somebody by the name of the Duchess of Doubloons. And she said, yeah, the cash handling policy. Said, what cash handling policy? So it's another, and then I called Joanne and I said, hey, have you thrown out everything in the garage? <laughs> she, so she, yeah. But she couldn't find anything on it. So Jen went back and started reading in other um, old board minutes. And she went back to 2009 and found three citations of wow. it. But she didn't find Fantastic. any, yep, she didn't find any, it, it had passed. So it's already been to a first and a second reading, but there was no citation, there was no uh, NEPN code with it, <laughs> not, no citations, nothing else. So what I would like to do is put that on the agenda so that we can get uh, the code attached to it in a second reading and the um, citations and cross-references. Sounds good. Do we need to vote on that? I don't think so. We don't. It's just, just notifying the public. Okay. Uh, first, first reading is just notify the public it's All a right. topic. Okay. Employment. All right. Um, so, so yeah. So I open up this. I op Here's the title for you. I open up this email. I see happy news. It's from Becky Good. It's oh, happy news. Good afternoon, Steve. I feel like Bill, her husband, and I have dotted all the eyes across the T's. It's my decision to retire this June. I was like, where's the happy news in this? Um, so she. she uh, uh, she said, uh, I can remember starting this journey back in 84 as a young adult living, living out her childhood dream of teaching kids to love being active. 36 years later, I feel that my dream has been fulfilled. I've loved all my years teaching in SAD 60 and have many fond memories. It is now time to begin a new chapter of my life, one which will include lots of time spent with grandkids and a great husband. Thanks for your support through the years. So I would need a motion on that. I'll make the motion. Steve, I say something about that. I came up with something. I know it's late, but Becky deserves it. Am I recognizing you? <laughs> uh, I'm Bill Good, Becky's husband. No. Um, so Mike Roberts, uh, from Bill's Middle School. So fairly quickly, um, I am fortunate that part of my career involved Becky Good. I mean, my, uh, half my career was at the high school. I didn't know who she was. Um, I can't imagine a, a better educator. If you, if you know her from uh, her, her phys ed, um, what she does in, in the gymnasium with kids, it's top notch. If you know her from relationships with kids in terms of her team room, that she quietly sends out Sunday emails to all of her kids, um, she's incredible. And if you know her from the morning greetings, where she's out there every day um, with 150 drop-offs, whether it be on, on rollerblades, wearing a Boston Bruins shirt, or um, with, a, with, a, with a, a face of Milton Fog, uh, she knows the kids' names, she's handing out treats to the, to the puppies. And she also helps kids realize that you have met the requirement, even as something as volleyball, and here's how you get to the exceeds level when it comes to volleyball, and here's how we <coughs> do vocab development when we're doing this unit and this is how um, we take literacy and we go through this and I'm going to care about each one of you. So her 36 years um, and there's another gentleman coming up that I could um, also speak highly of um, but, the, but the level of, of Miss Good, what she's done for our district and, and for our kids whether it be the old, old junior high or, or what she does, um, she will be greatly, greatly missed. I can tell by my emotion. Um, she's just top notch and I just wanted to say that. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Agreed. I agree as well. Yeah. She was one of my gym teachers. <laughs> really? <laughs> So the next one. Yeah. <laughs> and then she'll call you up. Sometimes she'll say, hey, we're doing this fitness challenge with kids. We oh, want yeah. adults to lead mm -hmm. these things. Come yeah. on out front. She's pulled up. And I said, uh, <laughs> yes. And, and uh, I remember seeing Steve, a uh, uh, Jerry Lock down there yeah. one time, and uh, Milt and some others too. And she said, uh, so, so what do you think, Steve? I said, well, I can come down on Thursday. She said, but we're done on Wednesday. I said, e exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I would need a do we want to okay individually motion all right i need a motion to accept this retirement no, you, i'll make a motion to accept the right submission regret former I'll student i'll second all in favor thank you uh dave sprague <laughs> dave says i've never done this before what am i supposed to do i said you just did it 
Uh, <laughs> where the heck is it? Oh, shoot. Uh, yeah, I honest. I about him as having a first name. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Good, evening. <laughs> Good evening, sir. I hope this email finds you healthy and happy. Let me add to your smile. <laughs> this is just to let you know that I will be joining you in retirement this June. I said, wow. Not in Sebago, but uh, if there's an official way to do this, please let me know. I said, you've just done it. Um, I've never done this before. Seeking fatherly advice. Thank you. <laughs> We need a motion. I'll make a motion to accept with, with regret. Yeah, with regret. Second. Second. Each here. <laughs> 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 That's what's Linda. I'm sorry. Linda, Linda, thank you. And all in favor. And uh, equal equal sentiments to to Dave. We appreciate uh, yeah. his yeah. commitment to the district, and he's got kids. Well, his last child, I think, is graduating this year. Is she graduating this year? I think yeah, so. I think so. I think so. Yeah. 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 So he said, perfect timing, Dave. Two in college. I like your thinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, next one, sorry, is uh, Chrissy Rickard, who teaches over at um, Lebanon Elementary School, one of our fabulous um, first five years of teaching people. Uh, she's she's on the on the uh, younger side of the experience rating, and she is she's just great. Um, Chrissy is a new mom, and she has asked for a leave of absence um, to uh, extend through the remainder of the school year. And she also said, which she didn't need to do, but she said, I want to assure you. And I'm committed to our district and look forward to returning in the fall. So she would like to have some time to be mother. Um, I would need an approval from the board on that. Okay, uh, can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to approve her uh, leave of absence. Julian? Yeah, and a second? I'll second. Okay. And all in favor? She is a marvelous young lady. I wish her. All Can happiness in doing this. Uh, Travis, you seconded it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there a leave of absence policy in the in the district? Uh, we do have guidelines for leave of absence. It, it's not. It's in the contract about LOAs. Yeah. At this time of the year, the board can consider it. There's no requirement to grant a leave of absence if somebody asks for it. You, or there's, there's no a time number. Like six months, nine, sixty days, ninety days. There's no. Okay. Mm -hmm. And before you go to the next yes. one, did we get a resignation that goes in line with this next one? We already did approved we it. Did we? Yes. Marissa Burrard. Yes. Because your son's in her room. Yes, and I wanted to deny it. <laughs> and we missed it? You did. Oh, I just looked you I did. just looked at the sixteenth to see if I missed it. I it think wasn't it was, in that one. I think it was one of the days. Yeah, she submitted that fairly early for us so that we would have that we time. hadn't approved it yet until we were waiting for a replacement. <laughs> uh, I told her I was going to deny it. <laughs> <laughs> and I just had an exit interview with her the other day. She didn't mention that, so I don't know. Uh, let's she see here. It was already approved. So. so Sarah McGonigal is a person who lives in Kittery. Um, she has taught, uh, she's, she's been an educational technician most recently for the last three years at the Horace Mitchell School in Special Education. She has uh, worked at the American School in London. Um, she is a frequent volunteer in lots of different organizations like Kittery Women Aid. Um, uh, she works as a teacher at the Children's School in La Jolla, California for five years. She was in Kinlichi Boarding School, second grade teacher for two years in the Navajo Reservation in Arizona. Uh, I don't know too many people who can say that. And she's, oh, I don't have the other piece. So she has, uh, she has seven, eight, nine years of experience coming to us. Um, she has a master's degree in education as well. So we're, we feel 
it's one of those situations you don't want to lose somebody at this point of a year and say what's our pool going to look like but you never know mm -hmm. somebody comes along and says hey you know this would be my chance to get my foot in the door and so uh, she's our candidate that uh, that um, Audra is asking to move forward to you All right. Can I get a motion? I'll uh, make the motion but before I go she has already started this week She's with a introductory-wise. Yes. And my kid has spoken highly of her already. Uh, Although Miss Barada is a huge loss, and I do not support she is. it. She is. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. She just looks like she might fit in well with she the class. So, so. Yeah, she, might, she might fit you, in well with the class. I have less fear of children getting lost with Ms. McGonagall. She, Miss, Mrs. She, Berard is watching and she'll know exactly what I'm she, talking about. She, I ran into her twice in the public in the last couple of years and both times she's been, have you seen a little guy in jeans? It's about both times. She's saying, why is it you? <laughs> is he running it was, from you? It was her, it was her child. Oh, it was her, her child. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, second, so Travis? Yeah, Travis and a second? Second. And all in favor? <laughs> Great, she'll be right. ecstatic to know. Yeah, so we said since today, tomorrow was the last day for Marissa, we said, well, let's take the chance this is going to work out and we'll have her be a substitute teacher and co teach for the week and get some uh, first hand experience and how to run the systems. Do we have our guest chef? I don't see anybody. This is very quick, it's right here. I'm just going to pass you out some pictures. Here with the um, guest chefs at the middle school for the cook for a, a um, what were we cooking? What was it? Uh, what do you call it? burritos? I want burritos. I'll go with burritos. Fajitas. Fajitas. I to Yes, with fajitas. Yes, so the kids can come along and collect their food from the uh, world-renowned chefs. <laughs> Okay, and then we have a word of the week. Yeah, so just a quick heads up. Uh, one of the really cool, just really simple little things that I sometimes notice as I walk walk through schools. I was walking around the middle school one day, and I noticed this word up. It was compose, uh, and and I thought, okay, I'll be composed. And and I I was thinking, wait a minute, there it is again on this wall over here, and there it is again. And then Deb came to the office. She had it in her forehead, and um, thanks, Deb. <laughs> I think that was real dedication. Uh, so she, so the, I talked, I said, asked folks about this. I said, well, what's going on with this? And some kids told me about it. They said, oh, that's our word of the week. It's, have you had other words of the week? Yeah, we had uh, elaborate. <laughs> when was that? A couple of weeks ago. What's last week? I'm not sure. I remember what it means, but I'm not sure. So it was. it's kind of interesting. Just those little just the little pieces that people do that make a difference in, in towards, towards <coughs> literacy. Okay. Oh, what's that? Oh, see, and tell me that. <laughs> Now I guess I didn't ask the right question. <laughs> All right. Uh, Berwick Comprehensive Planning. Oh, one more. Oh, one, one more. more. Where? Teacher of the Year. Is that uh, on yours? No. Oh, because it's, it's brand new for so we us. Tried to pass it around so we and gave it back to you. Oh. To me? Yeah, it just came over Where here. With the pictures. Oh, the pictures. Sorry, sorry. Where do you serve? Um, at the middle school. Uh, they set up out in the cafeteria. Everything's all set up, ready to go. I just I saw the drop dog. I didn't go out. That's the wrestling mats are in behind that. Oh. <coughs> that they pull out. Yeah. So teacher of the year nomination, a marvelous young lady by the name of Jess Cutliff, who has been teaching here now. I'm going to say she might be on five years, possibly six. Uh, she's a math teacher at the high school, and she um, works in the regular education program and also in our offshoot program, the multiple pathways program now. And it is just, she's one of these people that goes, it doesn't matter. What do you need? I'm going to take care of you. We'll get there. Um, 
just as it would be a great example of what we exemplify in North Bur in, in North Bur in MSAD 60. So I would love to see her progress from the uh, York County Teacher of the Year work to the state level. So we got to see that first round first, and I'll keep you apprised of that. But very proud of her, and she Excellent. began her career with us. Thank you. Yes. All right. Um, so I'll keep it super quick. I, um, the three Berwick reps, uh, we've been invited to join the Berwick Comprehensive Planning Committee, which is a group um, that is a couple of the town employees, the Berwick town planner, and then some citizens. Um, the, the schedule works out for me. <coughs> um, and I was able to go to one meeting so far, and it was really interesting. They had hired a um, the uh, re it was a regional economic development group. I can't remember exactly which one. And so the meeting that I was at, he was don't, presenting. Don't say Nesdek. It no. was <laughs> not. That's why I looked them up actually. <laughs> okay. Um, and um, they had done. They had just pulled a lot of information, kind of sliced and diced census data um it was just kind of a chance to look at what makes up the town as far as like where are people working where is the tax revenue coming from who are the employers um and from that you can kind of there was some transportation stuff in there so even though like a lot of the people sitting around the table were extremely knowledgeable about the town it's still there was still a lot of like huh that's interesting wow i wouldn't have thought about that so it just it was a um, uh, it was just an interesting look at a small town and you know and sort of figuring out like you know an example was the restaurant revenue, food service revenue you know quadrupled three years ago and we couldn't figure out why and it was when they redid Cumbies because that's where the majority of the food sales come from. So um, so a lot of this is to sort of um, help support the development of the prime tanning area. So there was another meeting that was a lot of the same people, but not actually this, uh, the committee, but it was with the new developers um, from, uh, are they from Gorham? The, or yes. West Brook? Yes. They're from Gorham. Gorham. Um, and just kind of a question and answer uh, session. So they're really beginning the development of that downtown area. Um, one of the things that came up uh, sort of just as I was leaving was um, it sounded like there was some concern that there was a disconnect on the school board's understanding of the growth or potential growth of the town for school age kids and what they feel like is going to happen. And I said, great, this is not the time. Don't try to sell me on anything. But I said, you know, let's maybe in the fall we can have you know they could come and speak to the school board the lebanon group could come and speak to the school board you know north berwick and we can all together hear straight from these three towns how they feel like the future is going to be developing you know especially when it comes to school age kids so um so i think there is a lot that's happening in certainly the downtown area a lot of it's retail and um, business office space there is certainly residential um, but the majority of what they're looking to build is is to bring business and to yeah. increase that tax base that prime tan, tan yeah. and and I kind of look at the so we we had, There's some I had other a meeting buildings with, uh, as well not just that downtown that, yes. that's part of the package I had a meeting with James Bellissimo very helpful in showing me some demographics and so forth and projections and things and I understand that that prime tannery area tanning might uh, not be a site that we're going to generate a lot of kids from I don't think it'll be a ton but right but I think that some other areas of the town uh, mm -hmm. that's where mm -hmm. I I have the yeah, yeah. conflict yeah. with the, the the park right across from the school and the uh, homes that are going up that I see that are being built that are three and four hundred thousand ranges yeah multiple bedrooms anyway it was it was an interesting meeting um there it wasn't a big group but i would say everybody that was around the table um 
just had an interesting perspective and certainly, you know, a lot to contribute. So I actually, I look forward to sitting on these meetings and I think they were very happy to have somebody um, from the school board there, just that perspective. Um, so yeah, it was it was very positive and, and I'll, I won't update you every time we have a meeting, but I will if there's something interesting, especially when it comes to anything school related. Okay. It's all good stuff. And then I will also just as a, a separate other, I think I'm probably gonna be able to speak on behalf of Travis as well. But both of our kids just went to Costa Rica mm -hmm. and had an absolutely outstanding trip. And I just want to give a big shout out to those teachers because I don't know if it just happened to be the right group of teachers or if all of them are like this on school trips, but I think they were just absolutely outstanding, all of them. And they had a, they had a big group of kids and it was a very kids. diverse group of kids. Say that again? 30 kids? Yeah. The number I heard, somewhere around it, I don't think it was, was I think eight. it might have been 30 with the teachers, but it was over 20 kids for sure. And, and it was definitely a diverse A very diverse group. And as far as I can tell, it was just about the greatest week and mm -hmm. just a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of good stuff. And I, and I think that that was all um, driven by those teachers. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree with your uh, assessment saying that it could likely be driven by the teachers because when I had the opportunity to go to China with students in Yuhong or to Peru with Rosanna, great experiences yeah. for kids, well organized, really just fun people to be with. And, and they saw these people in a whole different yeah. light. Yeah. Anyway, it was uh, <coughs> kudos to them. All right, I would like to call for an adjournment. Do I get a motion? Somebody, anybody, can we go home? Motion for adjournment. You made the motion. Yes, second. Second.